Hello, this is Jared Price. I'd like to welcome you to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. In today's session, we're going to talk about RealWorks Forensics, sampling and intensifying scans. Okay, hello, uh, Jared Price here. We are going to uh, go over some, uh, some sampling, uh, the processing of the TZF scans. So essentially, when you import, in this case, I'm importing a TDX file. This came directly from an X7 scanner. When I import this into RealWorks, uh, we have to uh, essentially process or sample these scans uh, in order to generate the point cloud. So sampling by step is by far the most common. Um, just to kind of cover this real quick. So a sample step of zero, that means it's going to preserve all the details. It's going to give you every point cloud point that's possible um, that was collected. So the, the pro of that is you get um, lots of detail. The con of that is you could be generating millions, hundreds of millions of points that you're not necessarily going to end up using. So think of it as if you have uh, evidence in one part of your room, um, that's where we need essentially the sample step of, of zero. We need all the details available, um, but the rest of that scene, um, we just created you know millions if not hundreds of millions of points that we're not gonna end up using. So it's going to increase the size of, of your database and your point cloud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do a sample step of three. That seems to be a good uh, ratio. It gives us plenty of detail to um, to look at the scene. To uh, if we have to do any more registration, we can do that. And then after we do an initial of three on all of the the station um, setups that we did, we can go into particular areas and then resample that area of essentially zero. So we're going to get all the details that are available. So I'm going to start this. And let it go through its process. It should only take a couple minutes. If I was doing a sample step of zero, um, this step is going to take a lot longer because the CPU on the computer is going to have to work a lot harder to generate those that extra you know, millions, if not hundreds of millions of points. starting to do the conversion. Essentially it's creating the, the point cloud on a sample step of three. Okay, so after processing the TZF scans, this was the result. Um, you could see I'm looking top down. This is obviously uh, an inside scene. Uh, real quickly I can show you Right now I have no filters on. Um, if I wanted to kind of see in here to where the evidence was, you could easily use the filter of see inside. So the more we zoom in, the more it's gonna allow you to see inside, basically chop the top off, um, which that's kind of part of this whole procedure is we're gonna end up cutting the top off of this roof uh, for the diagramming program. So. This was the result on a sample step of three. Um, you can see I have, this happens to be a mannequin head, a screwdriver, a gun, and some um, bullets or some casings. So this was kind of where our scene was. If I wanted to get, you know, essentially more details um, in this area, I can intensify these scans. So I'm going to show you kind of the easy way. You can resample in just this area. 
I often find that it's easier to open the Scan Explorer from Home tab, Scan Explorer. And this is going to take or open an external window, the Scan Explorer. Okay, so now we're in the, the Scan Explorer. You can go to different scans. Um, you can scroll around, and this is actually the, the colorized point cloud rendering. These are not photos. So, if this is kind of our uh, area that we're interested in, let me try to get a better perspective on that. I've got a hammer in the hallway there. So just to give you kind of an example, if we wanted more details in this area right here, uh, you can essentially go to the six extract points. Um, you can do a polygon, uh, which is currently selected, or a rectangular. Uh, I'll just do a polygon, <clears throat> and you can start to create a polygon around this area. Double click on your last point. And the important thing is, if you include all the stations, so anywhere this area um, is found on you know, not necessarily just one station, but multiple stations, you can automatically include all those stations so you don't have to go into each individual station and, you know, reselect this area. So I like to remove coincident points so we don't have points kind of stacking on top of each other. Uh, that again goes to the, you know, the size of this database. And so all points and spatial sampling uh, well, all points, that's what we want. So essentially all points is a spatial sampling step of zero. And it does not give us an, an estimate. Um, once we hit create, you can see it's extracting the points down here at the bottom right. And it's going to end up extracting. So it extracted um, over one million points in that small little area. So that gives you a good idea, um, you know, the difference between uh, a sampling by step of three and a sampling step of zero. So just in this little tiny area, um, the difference is over a million points. So you can imagine on a, uh, if we did it on the entire scene, that's, that's a lot of extra points that we're really not going to end up using. So once it created those, Uh, and we're actually still in the registration, so we need to get over to the production. Turn our initial cloud. So object one was what we just created. So if I view just that, so that's all the data that's available in that little polygon that I created. So you can see kind of these lines um, how much more dense the point cloud is uh, in this area. And of course, we'd probably have to go back in here from a different station setup where I could actually see that um, and gather that. But that gives you a, a really good example of that's without. Uh, you can see, especially on those shell casings, um, a, a sample step of, of three didn't really include a lot of the details on those shell casings. But once we do that in those in this area, um, I have much more detail on this mannequin head and these bullet casings. So that is kind of the and you can go back in here and you know if I wanted to do that gun I can switch stations to where I can see that gun. I don't know if I can. Looks like the garbage can got moved. 
Oh, here we go. So I can do the same thing, extract points. I'll do this uh, screwdriver as well. Uh, I'm just going to make a polygon around. Let's assume this sign was something I needed more details on. Okay, so that's my polygon area. Include all stations, remo remove coincident points, create. So in that small little area, <laughs> two and a half million points. So that gives you a really good idea of what we're looking at here as far as size. So if I turn off the project cloud, so this, apparently this was because I had the, the wall and probably the ceiling on there as well. Um, that was my little intensified scan there and then in that particular area. So this now can become part of you know your your overall scan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge these clouds. Call this uh, So what we really need to do is, well, before I move on, I just want to show you that this was my intensified area. So I'm going to pause and then we're going to move on to the, kind of the next step here. Okay, so moving on here. So now I have my project cloud and I have my intensified cloud. Uh, that I created, you know, I ended up merging my two object clouds of my kind of my intensified areas. So what I'm going to do right now is I need to kind of create my my working area uh, because a lot of this you know, over here, this really isn't part of my scene. So I'm just going to kind of clean things up and then I'm going to um, chop the roof off. So I'm going to use my segmentation. And so this is just going to be for my project cloud. And then I'm going to end up merging my intensified cloud. So I'm going to use a polygon tool. So I'm going to start, let's say, over here. Stairway here. I'm going to chop that off right here. And double click on your last point. So, this area is kind of my initial final scene area. So, I need to keep this in. And then I need to create the object cloud. And you can see object four, I close. So that's my cloud that I just created. So this is kind of my initial uh, final scene area. So I have my intensified area. So I need to end up merging those two together. Merge clouds. case number in here. It's going to end up being my working cloud. And then from there, I'm actually going to, I'm going to look at the front view. I need to chop this roof off. Segmentation again. Per 
size. So in this case, so do I want to keep this out or keep this in? This has been a big question. Um, you could keep this out. I'm actually going to keep it in because maybe the roof, you know, maybe there's evidence on the roof that I need to actually look at uh, in the diagramming software. So in this case, I'm going to keep that um, in and I'm going to create that object cloud. which now that can become case number two, three, four, one, roof. So that's essentially on its own layer now. top can use the quick tool so now we've got um, essentially our roof cut off so when we take it into the diagramming software uh, we have the roof off and we could also export uh, this roof to bring in the diagramming software so again you can see kind of this rough outline of where these intensified scans uh, were but it's normally in areas you know, where there was uh, lots of detail. So this kind of saved you probably tens, if not hundreds of millions of points in the database that weren't really needed because we can still get, you know, really good um, detail on walls and things like that. But where we really need the high details, uh, that's in here. So uh, that's essentially it for for this session, so I'm going to sign off. This has been another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. We hope you enjoyed this video and join us again next time.